He looks like he can still grab you by the collar and then the throttle you a couple good ones. That being said, I do believe that he probably goes to bed at 4 p.m. So I believe if we if we fought after the sun went down, I would have an enormous advantage. Dude, the mace has changed my life here. There's no doubt I'm not dodging the question. I, I could absolutely... Would I? This is not a threat. I'm just saying if, it, if push came to shove, could I defeat President Donald Trump in combat? Absolutely. Have you seen the way the man caters his White House dinners? <laughs> With the hamburgers? No, Putin would destroy me. It's not even... Like, let's be honest. I, I honestly think a lot of men my age overrate their fighting ability just on account of being younger. Like, I honestly think if you're talking about... Like, the average 32-year-old should defeat the average 60-year-old man in combat. However, once the 60-year-old man, you know, if you factor in, like... A job with physical labor, which obviously the president doesn't tend to really uh, overlap with that, but you get what I mean. Like a military career. Um, you know, like, I'll, I'll tell you right now, like, I think George W. Bush could still feed it to me. You know, he, he, he runs, he works out. I think he could, he could definitely, well, how old is he now? He's probably like in his, in his early 70s. I think there's a good chance he could take me. Plus, you know he was getting into all sorts of fights. Uh, well inebriated when he was supposed to be studying. He's probably got some experience advantage over me there. It's 50-50, he's a trust fund kid, but he's from Texas. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm, if anything, I'm trying to be overly uh, cautious with who I think I could defeat in a fight. Like, I don't think just because I'm on the younger side, or like mathematically guaranteed to be younger than every president in history at the time of their inauguration, I think it gives, it's a point in my favor, but it's not like an enormous point for sure. It's, it's not an irrefutable point. Don't kill me. I'm making progress, okay? Eat up, boys. It's very cruel that... One, um... One grass heals you for, like, one hit. Which U.S. presidents do you think you could beat in Jeopardy? Now, that's a very interesting question. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of presidents I would love to go up against in Jeopardy. There's a couple of presidents I would, I would be a little bit more frightened of for sure. I'm gonna say is is gonna be, is maybe this is a little braggadocious. I think I could defeat uh, Barack Obama in Jeopardy. I bought all this half moon grass, but now I'm afraid to use it. So let's buy more. I believe he look. He strikes me as a, I mean, an intelligent individual. Um, and unlike most Jeopardy contestants, I do believe he actually has some uh, awareness of sports trivia, which is usually where I make up a lot of points on uh, Turbo Nerds. Um, but I have no reason to believe that apart from, you know, being intelligent and well-spoken that he has any special trivia powers. Come on, come on, come on. 
You're absolutely right. Like, like any American president from the 1700s or the 1800s is automatically getting their ass beat. Simply because they won't even understand. Like, can you imagine feeding uh, George Washington an American history question? He would have no clue what's even going on. He would be like, what, what the heck is this buzzer you put in my hand? You want me to look at the what? The screen? What the heck is that? You know, he'd, he'd be very confused. He would get steamrolled, exactly. He wouldn't stand a chance. It would honestly be embarrassing. Such a good animation. Quick grass, please. <laughs> the category is like, movies! Basketball. George Washington's like, you know, come on. Tobacco farming. Come on, please say... T tobacco farming! Yes! The Battle of Monmouth! Ah, shit. The Adjudicator's Shield. Yo, that looks pretty sick. <laughs> World War Two. I live, bitch. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? The, the highs and the lows of George Washington playing Jeopardy. This was the battle where the British surrendered the Revolutionary War. Yes! Yes! Fuck yes! <laughs> this is uh, the first battle of the American Civil War. What the fuck? <laughs> what did you do? No. You can't do this to me. I have the- uh, I have the Adjudicator Shield, you! That's a great bit. Yeah. <laughs> American political parties. Oh, f what the fuck, you guys? You- It's like one of the last things I wanted in my resignation speech. All right. Well, you know, I know a little bit about the Federalists. I'm not too up on those Whig guys, but I think I'll be able to answer a couple. He was a Whig guy? He was, wasn't he? I thought George Washington was like a... He was like a neither. George Washington was like, I want no no parties, please. Thought he was like one of one of those. An insult. They mean wig without the H. I see. I understand your point. My grass, dude. Washington specifically said no political parties. Thomas Jefferson, eight years later, I'm about to end this man's whole career. Please acknowledge how busted it is having HP regen on your shield. Oh, baby. Anyway, good meme. I bet George Washington, if you brought him back in time, or forward in time, I should say, if you uh, took him to Mount Rushmore and he looked at it, I bet a single tear would fall down his cheek, for sure. I mean, say what you will about George Washington. But, like, can you imagine going forward in time, 
300 years, well, I guess like 200 years. And then being like, hey, hey George, check this shit out. Close your eyes, buddy. And then he opened his eyes and there was a fucking mountain with his face on it. You'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> You'd be like, is that Thomas? Thomas, we made it. Here's our worst president display. That'd be a nice prank. This area is getting a little. It's getting a little tricky. But we're close to the boss. We're close. To, we just got to go slower through that section. I think he would be absolutely furious if he saw Hamilton. I, I think he would just... I think there's so many reasons that he would not understand the play. He would be like... I guarantee about four seconds into the play, he would be like... Can they slow down? Like, I can't understand what they're... Can't understand what they're saying. Anyway, it's just nice to have some consequence-free discussion of American politics. Like, which ones could I beat up? <laughs> I did, so people are asking, which ones would you beat in chess? I'm telling you, I actually feel like anybody from the 1800s would have a huge advantage in chess. Because their attention spans just have to be so much longer, right? Because they, like, never... They've never had access to, like, all the instant st stimulation that we have I feel like if I if I spend more than two and a half minutes looking for a move my brain's just like I ah, just send it dude full send I feel like you know John Adams especially I feel like you could sit John Adams in front of a board at like 9 a.m. and then if you came back at lunch he would make his move I bet he would do some dumb shit, though, for sure. I bet he would probably hit you with, like, like, one H3 or something like that. If you don't know chess, just know that's a, that's a hyper bad opening. It's, it's a nonsensical opening. Queen Bishop checkmate would send him. Dude, can you imagine how much easier it would be to get away with the with like scholars mate or the the four move checkmate back in the day? You could you could probably do it for like 80 years before anybody would even notice because the word wouldn't get around. Hold on, hold on. Let me hydrate here. There's no salinity. Sometimes you gotta dilute the saline. I do find, like... So, like, I've been reading the Wikipedia articles on the Founding Fathers. Uh, as catalyzed by... Hamilton. It's very funny to me that it's renowned as this, like, people are like, oh, don't, you can't talk shit about, like, Ben Franklin. You can't talk shit about Thomas Jefferson. These motherfuckers were the smartest people on the planet, allegedly. And whenever they got mad that somebody insulted them, they challenged them to a one on one duel. How dumb do you have to be to be like, you know, oh, you you called me stupid in the newspaper? Let's fucking, like, one of us has to die over it. That's some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. And this was during the Age of Enlightenment. It's like, it, you can't write irony better than that. What are you on about? I'm just saying, like, okay, like... People would write, you know, like, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And then 
like a year later, they'd be like, excuse me, sir. You've suggested that my pantaloons are stuffed with a cod piece. Now you gotta pay. It's crazy. Duels often weren't fatal. Are you trying to justify, like, scholars getting into one-on-one -on -one gunfights? Like, we're in an age that's, I think, honestly dumber than any age in human history that I've been alive for, at least. And even then, if somebody in a video game is like, play me one-on-one, -on -one, you laugh at them and go, what are you, like, 12 years old? But meanwhile, like, the most powerful people in North America were just, like, killing other powerful people for mild insults. I guess they weren't mild back in the day, but still. Eighteen hundred suck though. I do think that like a lot of duels probably just happen more or less out of boredom. Okay, I'm gonna take some grass to try to get past this. Yeah, I can't even imagine like how bored you must have been in like the seventeen hundreds, dude. Or I like that's something I think about. Or are you not bored? Because you don't know that there's other stuff out there, you know? Like, you don't know that the PS5 is going to be invented in 300 years. So you're like... Like, I bet you would, you're probably... You, you feel like you're a real smartass, right? Charles Lee is out there in, like, 1770 reading, like, a thick-ass Bible. And he's like, can you imagine being alive before the... Before the Bible existed? Can you imagine how bored m people must have been in the 1300s before they could read the Bible? Anyway. Which US presidents would have been into anime? Probably like Franklin Pierce. I also love how there's like, this is going to be a little controversial. There's been like four gay presidents, but nobody talks about them. Like, you read through like these presidential synopses. And like, some of them is like, you know, they were married to like, you know, Martha. And some of them is like, they were married to like, you know, Teresa. And then for some of them, they're like, he was a lifelong bachelor who lived with his best friend. And you're like, really? <laughs> he's just he's just hanging out. Does you know for for two like twenty year old guys to live together? Sure, you know it's kind of like it's a frat house. It's a party for two sixty year old guys to live together. It's a little rarer. I'm not saying that it has to mean that, but I'm just saying you know James Buchanan. I see you. It's a shame you, like, extremely fucked up the pre-Civil War era, but, like, apart from that, I see you. They were just roommates. <laughs> okay. This is, yeah, my mom's been telling me all these stories, you know, she's been here for a bit now. I didn't know this, because I don't, I don't know, like, my mom's side of the family too much. Like, one level above my, uh, my mom. Like, I, I know my maternal grandparents, but apart from that, I'm like, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't know them if I saw them on the street. If they're, like, my great aunt or whatever. I guess I have a great aunt who, uh, for like 70 years, she's just lived with her best friend, who is a woman. But my grandfather refuses to acknowledge 
that it's even possible that they're in a relationship. He's just like, nah, she's just always been like a tomboy. <laughs> she's like 86 years old, Grandpa, come on. Okay, we're almost there. What are you doing? Just spam and block in my face? Disrespectful. Shoot down the resin shooters? Honestly, didn't even enter into my mind that that was a possibility. Actually makes too much sense. Let's go! <laughs> oh, we're indoors. Bonfire. You have to sleep in a bed to make them go away. I've been enjoying uh, all the memes surrounding the Jake Paul, Nate Robinson fight. Including the ones where Nate Robinson is asleep on a Minecraft bed. I did out of the loop on that, so I didn't watch the fight, but they were the undercard for the Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. fight. It was YouTuber Jake Paul against retired uh, New York Nick uh, Nate Robinson. And Jake Paul sent him to the, the Shadow Realm. Like, it's actually just a brutal knockout. Could you take Jake Paul? Absolutely not. Wouldn't even be close. First off, he's younger. He's in better shape. He has two years of uh, what I have to imagine is pretty high-end boxing training. And moreover, from reading what people said about the fight... Uh... People are like, you know, he's not an amazing boxer. He's still unpolished, but he's actually, like, pretty good. That's their words, not mine. So, could I, could I take uh, Jake Paul in a fight? Absolutely not. All right. Chat, I need your help. Where's, where's the shortcut? Where's the shortcut? There is none? Someone said missed the shortcut. There are no shortcuts. Son of a... There is one kind of, but it's a skip. Okay, okay. I trust Macros on that. The Adjudicator. I think this is the boss that Dan told me when you see him, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> okay. Alright, I get it. Another kind of weird boss, huh? They, they love the big arena bosses in this game. Grass? Stone of... Look for the stone of ephemeral eyes and he's gone. Does this sound like a, a Canadian loon? Um, okay, you, you gotta hit them elsewhere. <laughs> It's pretty gross. There's no denying that. You gotta like, hit, hit, hit him on the top of the head or something. <laughs> on, maybe on the hand? It sounds so much like like being on a Canadian lake in the summertime. Try tongue butthole. Let tongue. Supposed to hit you in the tongue, maybe? 
Let's go! Okay. Three damage. Maybe the big glowing spot. You, how are you supposed to hit something that's not at sword level in, in Demon Souls? Oh. Hit you in that thing. Okay. Now we're talking. That, that big gaping wound in your right side. I say this with no disrespect. This game's got some meme bosses, huh? It's all meme bosses. Sure it does. Like, I don't... I was laughing when Dan... and it, I mean, this is a big flex coming from someone who died so much against... Uh, Fools... Uh, whatever she's called. Fools Illusion. But, um... When Dan told me, like, he loved the Tower Knight boss fight so much, he, he helped people with it like ten times in a row. I was like, really? He just... He has like two attacks. And uh, this fight's reminded me a lot of that so far. I think this is one of those times where, like, the more we hit it... It's gonna do a little damage. And then once, uh... It, it fills up the meter, they're gonna die in one hit. Or they're gonna top it. There we go. And then you smash the bird. Okay, more of that then, huh? Oh yeah, I mean no disrespect to Dan. You know, everybody wants uh, different things from their Souls game. Oh no. Uh, drink grass quick, drink grass, thank you. Deserved. <laughs> Dan and I, we're on opposite sides of the spectrum, um, I think, for what we want out of Souls. My man's out here disrespecting Sekiro nonstop. Um, and uh, defending Dark Souls 2 on the regular. I'm out here with the uh, Patrician's Choice. Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, and Sekiro are all at the very tippy top. Followed by Dark Souls 1. Demon Souls, the jury's still out. And uh, Dark Souls 2 for sure is at the bottom. Um... For me, at least. Uh, so, somebody said equip the Crescent Falchion when you go up against the Adjudicator. We can do that. We can do that. I, I welcome all the all the so-called backseating. I was hoping H-Bomber guy was going to be there for the Friday stream with, uh, with Hassan. Because I was like, I already got a... I got a joke that I can razz Hassan about around Dark Souls, uh... Dark Souls 3's Nameless King fight. I got a bone to pick. I was- I had, like, it semi-rehearsed in my head. I was like, oh, just, you know... You think you can trust this guy? He thinks that Dark Souls 2 is the... Best Dark Souls game. People would be like, get him out of here right now. Pretty sus. Exactly. Pretty sus.
He likes Bloodborne more. All right, I mean, that's just, you know, that's like obvious. It's like saying you like, you know, drinking a glass of water more than you like being kicked in the face. No! You tried to trick me. Okay, Crescent, Falchion. Equipment load? Still good. You again? You again, again? Fishing for stabs? We're going in, boys. We're just going in. Davinki? I've been DMing with the... The Davinki crew. The Davinki twins. I told them... Because I didn't know that they were from Vancouver. I told them maybe when COVID is over, you guys can, like, throw me through a... A cheap table or something like that. Because they're also, uh... Wrestlers. I was like, well, maybe you could film yourselves throwing me through a cheap table. <laughs> and they said, ha ha ha, we can definitely make that happen. Okay, Crescent Falcon. Hopefully I don't die. I assume they would tell me what I need to know to not die. He do be jiggling like a bowl full of jelly, though. Why not get Uno to do it? Just play Uno lives in, uh... Sorry, Evil Uno lives in Ottawa, which is, uh, a, a flight away. The trick is to hope the table breaks. So you tell me we should buy one on, like, wish.com? Shouldn't even reply to this one. I <laughs> said you'll get a kid if you get it from Wish.com. You've got that confused with with Wayfair, okay? You've got your your W uh, online retailers mixed up. Wish.com is the one where. Uh, the picture and the actual product look nothing alike. Way Wayfair is boneless Amazon? No! Wish is boneless Amazon. Wayfair is expensive Ikea. man really only has one attack, huh? Um... I think if you hang out on the top, they might, like, throw something at you. One and a half attacks? Oh, he licks! Men only have one attack, and it's freaking disgusting. Alright, I mean, that's progress, baby. Two bosses down. 
Mlem. There's an important regen ring on your way back up. Send it, dude. Send it. I can't believe you got here before Dan. No! I don't believe you. Touch the archstone first. Okay, okay. Where's where's Dan? Oh well, yeah, that's true. To be fair to Dan, he has been using photo mode. Like, oh, it's the adjudicator shield. I get it now. He has been using photo mode like crazy. He died 128 times to an NPC. <laughs> But the pageantry is on parallel. I agree with that 100%. Like, I know th there's people with uh, milk toast opinions on Dan. They're like, I could take him or leave him. There's, but most people have, like, strong opinions. They're either like, he's super entertaining, or they're like, I wish he would take things more seriously. I think Dan is one of the most entertaining people on the platform, for sure. And also... Uh, puts more effort into moment-to-moment -moment entertainment than, like, any streamer uh, on the website, myself included. But there are sometimes, even I will admit, there are sometimes where I'm like, I just am gonna need you to level up so that we can make it through the level uh, of the sponsored stream, please. Just gonna need you to We'll just tone down the jokes for, like, just a few seconds. <laughs> and then if you could just actually start interfacing with the mechanics of the game so we could proceed, it would be better for all of us. Alright, now let's go down. Wasn't this the ring? The grave robber's ring? become harder for black phantoms to detect that is definitely not <laughs> what you wanted me to get all right good start good start Just get him. Just get him. What if you just got him? Then you don't have to worry about it. That was scary. Turn around in the building and hug left. Okay. We were in here, so we would turn around in the building and hug left. Dan died so many times. He was on pure black world tendency. And died in one hit to every single enemy. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. Oh, Sekiro. Knights or bishops? Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... I mean, I'm a I'm a bishop main for sure. Um, I, between the two, I you know, much like the conventional wisdom, I do prefer bishops. I think I would rate um, knights slightly closer to bishops than the average, uh, you know, intermediate level chess player. I, I do feel like a lot of players at my level don't value knights enough. Like, for anybody that's that's non-familiar uh, with the rules of chess, or not the rules, but the, I guess, the, the strategies of chess, uh, you know, there's no there's nothing in the rule book that says, like, knights are worse than bishops. It's, it's just based on, like, ex the expected value of the piece, right? So there are actually a lot of situations where, 
you know a knight can be more valuable than than even a queen you know if your if your queen is is completely trapped then a knight's in a an amazing position um where they, it can't be pushed out it can have a lot of control would you ever promote a pawn to a knight well the cheeky answer is you would you know promote a pawn to a knight if it created mate but realistically probably not <laughs> No, you, I mean, you've got me there. Um, excuse me, madam. I will say, it, this is like the first time that I have felt so amazing at games. Like, sometimes in our Discord, which you can join, by the way, if you're uh, an egg subscriber, um, people will post their photos of, like, their chess games and be like, this is really tough. And then in, like, Less than five seconds. I'm like, I know exactly what you're supposed to do there. I'm keeping a close watch. Feels great. I'm the backseater now. Okay. Well, do we got a lot of space for item burden here? You have a heart of gold. You have a heart of gold. Who do you talk to to not get a uh, garbage? The Kijiji. To not get garbage grass. Patches. Okay, thank you. I did want to talk to you first, though. Because I want to see... We can upgrade the Uchi Gitana with the... Sh we need sharp stone. Do you buy sharp stone from the filthy man? <laughs> Correct, in 2-1. Thank you, thank you. Dude, honestly, like, I feel for normal players. Like, if you're a normie, how do you know what to do in this game at all? It's crazy. I guess you just go online. But that takes so much work. As a new chess player, let's get like 10 of these, dude. What, what's your best advice to get better? Um, it's kind of, it's tough because it's been a while since I was like in that new player position. I would definitely say like, one, one thing that can give you more confidence is to uh, learn like, one opening as white and then like a defense that you're aware of that you can play as black to every response or, or to to every white opening so ba like for the white pieces you could just learn like e4 for example and, and pick a line but then for the black pieces you need a response to e4 you need a response to d4 you i mean you, you don't really need like a response to c4 i think but it just you know maybe later you don't have enough souls. No interest, eh? Um, you're not going to last long here. And then, like, I actually agree with what someone said in chat. I think learning endgames is very valuable. Not just as, like, um... Well, like, let me put it this way. Like, I sometimes I see people talking about chess, and they're like, oh, I'm really, like, nervous about this game even though they're up by like two pawns and a piece. And you're like, if you learn end games, you will never find yourself in that position. If you're in the end game and you're up by like a material advantage, you just have complete confidence. You're like, you're just gonna squeeze them. I'll deal with Uchi Gitana plus two for now. Why? Because, I mean, like, basically, here's the thing. Once you have an advantage over somebody, they no longer want to trade pieces with you. Because if they trade pieces with you, uh, you they have less pieces available to exercise their will. And you get closer to, like, less, to having zero pieces on the board, but you're up on them, if that makes sense. Um, no, I mean, why Uchi too? Alright, never mind. <laughs> yeah. 
I will say, I'm trying to think of where we go next. We haven't been to we haven't been to one three in a long time, or ever, I think. Hold on, I'm gonna get my fan going as well. Flame lurker. Oh. You can't go. You haven't beaten any arch demons yet. Yo, they got arch demons in this game now. What the heck was going on in there? You can't go here yet. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good to know. The real, like, it, to be honest with you, once you get past a certain level at chess, like, uh, the end game, I don't want to say it's solved, but if you, if you go into the end game with a disadvantage, you're probably fucked. The opening is fairly static. The mid game is where, like, all the magic happens. That's where you got to learn, uh, more theory, really. Go back to 4-2 and get patches. Look at it, my brother Patches. He's chilling right here, bald Andy Sambert. Well, we've long been acquainted. Nice stuff, eh? <laughs> um. Okay. You say Latria two? I'll take a look at Latria two. Anyway. There's just like, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to explain. There's little things you you kind of need to know um, in the chess mid game that are kind of hard to just be like, just learn this. But, you know, control over the center of the board, pawn positioning so that you, you know, you just kind of instinctually, or I guess after a certain amount of practice, you just kind of instinctually know, like, man, my pawn structure is fucked. <laughs> you've got like orphan pawns or uh, you've got like terrible pawn islands or something like that those end up being huge disadvantages when you get to the end game yeah so basically there's three phases there you go <laughs> all, all of this discourse comes down to there are three phases of the game hello I do maintain I've never lost a game where you uh, where I've gotten checkmate on the enemy king. So if you if you have the means, yo, this is pretty good. Goodbye item. If you have the means, checkmate is like an extremely effective weapon. Nice try. Dude, I never thought I'd say it. I love Dex. Uh, what the heck, Dex? You're making me attack so freaking fast. You've just jinxed yourself with a stalemate for next game. I'll tell you, I would not be surprised if over the entirety of the chess series, we never have a, a draw. In tournament chess... Um, you draw constantly, at a certain level at least. Like, draws are probably the most common outcome, or at least close to it. Online, like, low elo rapid chess? I don't think so. I don't think it'll ever happen. How do you draw in chess? There's a few different ways. One is, um, you know, you can accidentally draw by putting either they put your king or you put their king into a position where they have no legal moves like they can't move anywhere without putting themselves into check um, if if you do the same sequence of moves you and your opponent three times in a row it's a uh, it's a draw if you take more than 50 moves after the opponent's last non-king piece is captured, it's a draw. But honestly, like, most of my draws in tournament chess were, like, you get 20 or 30 moves into the game. Um, 
and then you and your opponent just kind of like look at the board and you go like oh fuck and then you like look at each other and you go you want to just call this and they like honestly some of the time they're like yeah yeah i do i would rather just like eat lunch than play this out You're like an embarrassment to gargoyles. You're really using a crossbow? <laughs> oh, you'll find a weapon past here. Oh yeah, dude, creating a a stalemate by accident when you're about to dominate is it it sucks real bad. The flame burger. See ya. That's a Dex Greatsword? Oh, baby. Now we're talking. What? You're not dead? Oh, okay. Never mind. Um... I don't, I don't want to enter the fog. I'd like to... Oh, I would like to enter the fog, please. No, I don't, uh, I've never really played Go except, like, you know, casual games. I, I don't know if I would like it just because, like, I already went through, like, that awkward growing period in chess where, like, you suck really badly. I don't know if I want to go through it again. Just don't suck. <laughs> Just beat uh, Google DeepMind, forehead. But yeah, my my hope for the chess series, like the the three episodes, they're not all up yet. But there was like one episode where I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna do E4 anymore. I'm just gonna do uh, I'm gonna try the English opening. And then, then the next episode, I was like, I'm not going to respond to E4 with E5 anymore. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to try the Karakon defense, which is one uh, E6 is black. Let's see what's going on over here first. I want to always try to, you know, keep it mixed up a little bit. You know what I mean? Try to mix it up a little bit. Thanks for the soul. E6 is Hafu's move. Oh, so Hafu, she plays the the French. How does E6 develop? E4, E6, D4, D5. Is that the typical the typical line? Parlez-vous le français? <laughs> yes, that's typical. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Hello. Excuse me. Um, are you you're pumping juice into this extra fool's idol? You could also do C six instead of D five. I'm trying to get the the taste out of my mouth of that being a uh, it's like a recipe for a closed game and I can taste the bile already all right all right pretty normal I would it's not even I don't say this to flex I would absolutely destroy Dan in chess It would be fun to watch uh, for, for me. I don't believe that he would, uh, he would come back wanting a rematch. Let's put it that way. Hey, look at this. I know this thing. That's where you are. You're there.
Do you think you'd fools made him? Nah, that's like, that's BM. I remember, so like the first time I found out that I was like half decent at chess was, um... You missed something great up there? Okay, I'll, I'll go back. Um, but like, basically there was always some kid who always thought he was hot shit. Like in a tournament, he would just play the fool's mate opening as white against uh, everybody. And he would win like, you know, his first six games. Just because like so many people that come to the tournament don't even know. Like they're, they're like fourth graders, right? But then I remember I played him. It was a 10 round tournament. We were both 9 and 0. I played him in the 10th round as the black pieces. And then he moved like his queen to f3 to set up the mate. And then I just moved my knight to f6, which I think is just, I mean, like a good response in almost any opening. And he was like, what the fuck? What do I do now? Like it puts, if you try to fool's mate, it puts you at an enormous disadvantage if your opponent uh, doesn't know what they're doing. Oh, scholars. I got scholars and fools. Well, because it's a, it's a bad question then. You can't put him into fool's mate. He needs to put himself into fool's mate. That's the one where he just traps his king accidentally. Go back up. All right. I will, I will go back up. But yes, if if you are if you maybe have a nephew or a niece that's in like fourth grade and they're interested in chess right now, do not show them scholars, mate. Um, show them a real opening, and they will shit on the kids who try to do scholars, mate, on them. At least at my middle school, like going ten and zero was basically like automatic. Oh! <laughs> what the heck is this? Green? Irish Spring? Always trust a friend. Be wary of a villain. Are you here to fight the demons? Yes. If so, then help me escape this place. He does look like Lautrec. If, but if you don't say yes to this on the... On your first playthrough of a Souls game, you're a, a true coward. But that's none of my business. He, he do be holding the S stock, though. He's as confused as I am. I was hoping he would, like, tell me where to go. A cute person awaits. The banter elevators. <laughs> Going down. Have you ever had beetroot on a burger? I'll be going back up again. Um. Yo! So Kate, um, I don't like beats. That that's my answer there. Let's let's pivot. Hey, so we we went to the next level of um, streamer convenience. Like I gotta tell you, I've been eating like a lot of kind bars. That's been like my my go-to. It's not horrible necessarily, but not really like a conducive lunch. So we found this like meal prep service, but it's not like Blue Apron. They actually, like, cook the meals, package them, and then deliver them. So now I can have real lunches before the streams. The streams are about to get, in my opinion, like 15% better. Thank you. I'm going to be fully nutrated. I will remember this. I am certain we will meet again. So takeaway? No, it's not takeaway, because, like, like, it's like nine bucks a meal, which is... In, by Vancouver standards, at least, insanely cheap for a prepared lunch. I will remember this. I would, Clementine I will remember this. It, it is crazy, too, because, like, uh, 
Like the Blue Apron service we have is like, I think it might be 10 bucks a plate and you got to cook the food yourself. <laughs> what a rip. Blue Apron is way overpriced. Yeah, but that's stock price on Friday, though. Ooh. I don't, I don't know how to get out of here, my friend. You definitely need to kill this guy. Let him live. You're going to want to kill him. You definitely don't kill him. This man is not your friend. Kill him or others will die. Macro says I'd yeet him. That's all I need to know. If Macro says yeet him, he gets yeeted. Plus, I kind of want that helmet, dude. <sighs> Whoops. <sighs> Whoops. <sighs> Whoops. Just get that green back. Get that green back. There we go. <laughs> Let me lock on. Oh, oh my god. He had so much horizontal.